Alright, greetings. This is Kyle Liv with another R tutorial video, this time on how to do a one-way chi-square test in R. Uh, before I get started, I'd like to give a shout out to Wildlife and Marine Biology Clubs for another year of awesome college royal goodness at the University of Guelph. Um, this is actually our 91st one, so thank you for creating awesome shows and educating the public on various uh, things in our major. Now, continuing on to the actual tutorial, our first step is obviously to set up R and import the data. If you don't know how to import data or use R, I recommend you go back to my first video where I explain how to download R and import data. So, we're going to start up R, and in, as usual, I'm going to create a script and tile it vertically. Ta -da. So, we need to import the data. Um, I've already pre-written the code, so I'm just going to run through it uh, slowly for you guys. First, obviously, read.csv. And now we have a file entered. So in this case, I already have a data file prepared. If you want to follow along, you can go to the description of the video and copy uh, the data that I've provided. But here's the one that I made up uh, for our purposes. So we have three titles of form, color, and category. Form can be either round or wrinkled. Color can be yellow or green. And the category is simply just a combination of whatever uh, was given. So in this case, round.yellow or wrinkled.yellow. So obviously from this data, you can tell that we're doing in a, a frequencies type of data rather than measurements, so we're just counting. Um, Chi-square tests are useful to see if there is a significant difference in what has it been observed and what has been what, and what you're expecting. Now, uh, now that we've imported data, um, if you don't know your observed frequencies, you can actually use R to calculate it. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to create a contingency table that will allow R to uh, re, uh, be able to run a chi-square test on our data. And by doing this, we can also see uh, our observed frequencies. So, to do that, we're going to have a variable name called uh, CT. Oh wait, before I get to that, uh, just to see if our data was properly imported, I've got a names data command, which basically just tells us to show the the titles of the row columns that were shown. So form, column, category, looks like everything's working fine. So back to the contingency table. I have a variable called CT, and we're going to assign this to it, which is table bracket da data dollar sign category. If you recall, our variable uh, name for our data is just data, so it's just referring to that. So if you run this and enter that, you'll see that our contingency table shows our categories, which in this case is like round green, round yellow, wrinkled green, and wrinkled yellow, as well as how many times they, they actually occurred, so 5, 9, 4, and 2 respectively. So the table is necessary for the chi-square test, but it's also useful if you want R to calculate your uh, number of observed frequencies, just in case you never did that earlier. And now to actually do the chi-square test, it's actually very simple. You just simply run the command chi-sq.test, as well as what you want to run it on, which is, in this case, our contingency table. So we run that, and it'll give us the the chi-squared value, the degrees of freedom, as well as the p-value. So very handy. However, it should be noted that this was assuming your expected frequencies were equal among all your categories, which would be, in this case, 25%, because we have four. So 25, 25, 25, 25. It must always sum to 100%, obviously. But let's say you are studying something and you have different expected values that are not equal. So let's say uh, in my example, let's say one of them has a, f we're expecting 40%, and then the other would be 30%, and 20, and 10, as opposed to 25 for each. 
Uh, this is very easy to do in R as well. So in this case, we're going to create a variable that lists these um, probabilities, which is, so we're going to call that PT, and we're going to list our probabilities of 40, 30, 20, and 10%. And then we run the same, same test again, but this time, our probabilities is going to equal to this list of probabilities. That way, instead of assuming 25% for each uh, expectation for each category, it will now run the run with probabilities expect with expected frequencies of 40% and 1, 30%, 20, 10, etc. So we just simply run that, and as you see, uh, when we uh, are looking for different expected frequencies, we get different values for our chi squared and p values. And it should be noted that in this case, it gave us a warning that it might not be uh, correct. This is due to the fact that the, our sample size was pretty small, and since it assumes normal distribution of data, it, it requires more a larger sample size in order to make sure your approximation is actually uh, accurate. And that's it for a one-way Nova. Oh, sorry, not one-way chi-square test in R. Um, keep in mind that obviously it doesn't have to be this kind of category. The categories could be something else, like say if you're observing a fish and you want to see which uh, side to stay in the most, then you can do um, counts of how long it's staying in each section or something like that. All right, that's everything. Um, I'll be I'll post the data as well as this code in the description of the video if you'd like to uh, run through it yourself. And yep, that's everything.